camera lights action, action. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Um, this video is more or less a continuation of my last video. So if you did not watch the last video, I will link it up for you to watch it. So we're basically talking about you know schooling, admission process, and everything about schooling and studying in Lithuania. So I have with me the delectable. Hmm. Oh, yes, I've been wanting to use that word. <laughs> I've been wanting to do it actually. <laughs> Yeah, so she shared her experience in the previous video about, you know, finding out about Lithuania, applying to University of Lithuania, and now she's currently a master's student in Vilnius University, Lithuania. Yes. So now we're going to be talking about the visa application process, uh, all that she needed for her process, basically. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the documents. What are the documents that you needed for your student visa? Okay, so now this is a bit tricky because it differs. Okay. For me, I was self-sponsored. So I needed um, my statement of account. I needed a letter from my job, like a study leave to say, yes, I'm going to school, <clears throat> but I've been returning. Um, I needed a reply of study leave from my, my place of work. I needed six months back statement, um, birth certificates, Notarized. All these documents have to be notarized before you take them to the embassy. Um, what else did I need? I needed an introduction letter. Yeah, basically your admission letter from school. And before then, the school will send you, just let them know when you want to apply. You write to school and say, oh, I'm about to apply for my visa. They would issue you a mediation code that will be sent to the embassy. All you have to do is just print the email and attach it to it. Um, you need... Your data passport page, you have to notarize it also. Okay. Yeah. So when you say notarize, can you explain what that means? Also, you take it to the court. Okay. You take it to, it's like just getting your documented license in the court. Okay. And then you put a stamp on it. Okay. It's pretty easy. You need a bank insurance. You need to get your insurance done. It costs around 30,000. You can use any of the insurance company in Nigeria. 30,000 naira, 30, by the way. <laughs> not here. <laughs> 35,000 naira. Yeah, 35,000 naira. 35,000 naira is about... Less than 100 euro. Yeah. Probably yeah. say like... 70? 70 euros. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm talking euros now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking euros now. Wow. Yeah. And, and the beautiful thing about Lithuania is you can work here as a student. But... Before you begin to work, you have to get your PR, which is a different... Your, you mean your TRP? TRP, your temporary, not PR. Not PR, 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 PR <laughs> sorry. TRP, yeah, you need temporary your residency temporary permit. residence permit, which is a different ball game. You start that process when you get here. Police character certificate also, you need that. Um, bear in mind that after you get your visa, you will still do another police character certificate again and then have it legalized also. You have to send it to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. People get it mixed up. Yeah. Oh, wow. So yes. let's take it again. Yes. So after you get your visa, okay. yes, you still need to get another, another one. Another one, yes. Okay. This one, this time around, you have to send it to Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Abuja okay. to get it um, legalized. Okay. Because that's the one you're going to use when you get here for your TRP. Okay. Yes, people get it mixed up. Okay. Let me just point out that she is talking about the process in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So when she says Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Abuja, that's like the capital of Nigeria, Nigeria right? Yes. But I'm sure that whatever country that you're applying from, um, you would have where you legalize. You also have your Ministry of Foreign Affairs mm -hmm. where you legalize your documents. Document. If you're applying from Africa, I, the, the only places that I know that you can apply from in Africa is Egypt, South Africa, and more recently, Nigeria. Nigeria. So if you're in West Africa, you know, you can go to Nigeria to submit your documents. Mm -hmm. If you are in South Africa, you can go to South Africa or wherever it is. So these three places are places that I'm certain that you can get your, you can submit your documents mm -hmm. for your visa, just to point that out. For other continents, I'm sure you find information about that. And you'd have like options of other places to submit your documents to. Yeah. Also, you need to have your school certificate, your school certificate, leave it original copy actually. You have like photocopy of this document and original copy of them. So, do you have to submit these original yes. copies? No, no, you submit the photocopy, okay. but then they cite the original. They will okay. tell you to bring both for citing. Okay. And then they will take the police character certificate from you, the original of that. Okay. They will take it from you. And that's why you have to notarize them. You have to notarize them and do it for the copy of them. Okay. They will take the original of your bank statement, 
they'll take the original of your um, letter of um, admission, okay. which you printed. They'll take the original of your study leave. All of those, they'll take the original for them. Now, for those who are being self-sponsored, because okay. I have friends who were self-sponsored, okay. who, sorry, who got sponsored, who had sponsored. Okay, so before we go to, before we get to the self Sponsored. I'm self-sponsored. Yeah. So for the self-sponsored, before you can be self-sponsored, it's mandatory for you to get that study leave in quotes. Yeah. If your work, if you have a job mm -hmm. and say, oh, okay, I'm self-sponsored, but I'm not working anywhere. I'm sponsoring myself. Mm -hmm. I work for myself. You have to have your um, tax clearance certificate. Test? Ta tax. Tax. Tax clearance. Okay. TCC. Okay, okay. Yes, okay. your company has to be registered. You have to have okay. all the documents in check, and then you have to have a minimum of um, five million naira in your account. account. Yes, because they need to know that you can sustain yourself okay. for the period at which you are in the Premier for. Okay, so this this applies whether you're yes the bank now if you want to if you're being sponsored, I think you have to have like maybe five to eight million because they need to understand that whoever is sponsoring you also has money to take care of themselves back home. Okay. Yeah. So let's. Uh, so um, the first things we discussed was yeah. self sponsoring, and then now we're going to do discuss the, when you're being sponsored. Okay. Yeah. If you're being sponsored, maybe by your dad, your mom, your sister, your relative. Most times they'll tell you, which I think is true, to always um, ensure that you're being sponsored by your parents or someone who you're in close relation with, someone that you maybe bear the same surname. Mm -hmm. It gives you a better leverage. It gives you better edge. So all you need, you would need um, the passport data page. Did I mention that you also need your NIN? Um, what's that thing called? That thing we register in Nigeria. National Identification, Identification Number. Number. Again, yes. this is specific to Nigerians. Yeah, just to Nigerians. <laughs> Nigerians, you need your NIN. You need to get the certificate, the slip. Mm -hmm. Yes, you take a copy of it, which they get from me. Your birth certificate also is very important. So if you're being sponsored, you need a copy of the international passport of your sponsor and also a letter from your sponsor, a letter of introduction and your bank statement. So that's the difference. Uh, so basically in the first one, mm -hmm. this, you're submitting your own documents yes. and in the second one, you're submitting the documents yes. of your sponsor. Yes. You, could add, you, you could add your own um, uh, bank statement too, to read. It really maybe just gives you a bit. You could... <laughs> You could add your own back statement to it. It just gives you a bit of edge, you know. It's really not important. But once they can see, especially if the person sponsoring is your parents, all they need is an introduction letter, um, the person's data, passport data page, yes. If possible, if you can get the person NIN to attach it to it, that is for Nigeria, do again. And also the person's six months back statement that shows that they have enough money to run you through school, to support you while you're there, and also support themselves. Okay, great. Thank you. So another question that people ask is if they can work with their, uh, if they can study and work. And she already mentioned that you can, but not on your student visa. Mm. You have to change to a temporary residency permit when you get to Lithuania. So the question now is how long does it take for you to change? I'm, I'm, I'm still on mine. I'm still on the process. So um, now the thing is, most times people don't really tell you so much about this. It's when you get here, you see, like, it's, it's, it's a... So I'm going to give you guys a hack. I'm going to just... I mean, it's a mission. <laughs> once you get here, it's very important that the, the police character certificate you're bringing from Nigeria needs to be sent to Ukraine. It's always advisable if you come here, if you find Nigerians and other people, because it's really more expensive. It's more expensive when you have to DHL yourself. You have to send it to Ukraine. You have to get it um, notarized. And then it comes back from Ukraine. Ukraine gives you... A letter that says yes this person is a Nigerian this person doesn't have a criminal record now when that comes here you still have to send that to Ministry of Foreign Affairs here in Lithuania okay for them to legalize it okay you have to also um, notarize your passport data page here I did that in Gedimino okay <clears throat> Gedimino is one of the notary places in Lithuania so if you come here you could just search for it it's a hack you can only find it on <laughs> Amy's channel so once you do that, you attach it with the document that you're sending to Ministry of Foreign Affairs. It costs about um, 11 euros to legalize your document from <clears throat> Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But then DHL to Ukraine. Ukraine, 
Hmm. It cost about 160, 120 something euro to and fro. 65 euro going, 75 euro coming back. But then they deliver it to your house. You have to open a bank here. To open a bank, you get a letter from your school of introduction. Okay, so this okay. person studies here. It helps you open your bank. Cost about 62 euros to open an account here in Sweat Bank, which is what I, I opened. So after you do all of this, you get your documents together. You write to your school and say, oh, I'm applying for TRP. I need a mediation code. And then they send to you. And then you go to the, because everything is online right now due to COVID. You go to the immigration website and voila, you apply. And they give you a date of when to submit. And then you pay. You also need another insurance when you get here. That's another thing they don't tell you. You need a new insurance when you get here, which costs um, 60 euro for a year. And also you pay for the TRP, which is at about 120 euro. So you spend like roughly 300 euro to get your TRP. But it takes three months to come out. Basically, you already know that if you are coming to study as a student, you're most likely not going to be working for the first three months. Because if you start off immediately, you would have to wait till your temporary residency permit is ready. Mm -hmm. So another question is, do you need like some amount of money in your account? Yes. Yeah. You have to, that's why you open a bank account. So you have to have like, um, right now it's 3,640 euros. It's divided. If you divide that by 12, I think it comes to about 3,300 and some euros. So they feel like that's what you should run on monthly. So basically that's it. Yeah, so they need to know that you have some amount of money in your account to sustain you. Mm, that like 4,000 like, euros. So roughly 4,000 euros in your account mm -hmm. and you can get that. Another question, how long did it take from when you submitted your documents in the, in the visa? VFS. Yes. It's, it's not cast in stone. Yeah, it varies because mine came out really fast. But what I can tell you, the normal standard is um, once you submit your document, you should get a call in the space of two to three weeks. Some people take a month. Some people take six weeks. It really is not cast in stone. Honestly, you get a call from VFS and they tell you, oh, you've been scheduled for an interview. Mm -hmm. So you get ready for your interview. At the interview, you, you have a Skype interview with um, the embassy in Turkey. And then they just ask you questions like, why are you coming to school in Lithuania? Why in Lithuania? What's the name of your school? They just want to understand that you know what you're doing and somebody is not doing it for you. And you're not just coming to their country to run away. So they just ask you questions like, why are you coming here? What's your plan after schooling? What's your long term plan? Plan? Just normal questions. So, and then they tell you that, um, thank you, we'll get back to you before the end of two weeks. People say at that point, just go and be buying your suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I mean, if your documents are in place, if you have yeah. your admission, you are more likely. I'm not going to say 100% because no, 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 no. we can't even guarantee that. But like if everything is in place, you, I don't see why you wouldn't get your visa. Yeah, and then try as much as possible. Run away from fake documents. They will know. Do not submit fake documents. They will know and they will blacklist you. And try as much as possible to be honest on the question. I mean, I heard of a, of a guy who had been denied a Schengen visa before, I think to Germany or so, and then he asked him, and he said, no, he has never applied for a Schengen visa. And the guy said, but I have it here on record. You, you have, you've been denied, so why are you lying? And he was denied. You could just, it doesn't mean they won't give you. The fact that you were denied in another country doesn't yeah, mean... Yeah, just be honest just about be honest. it. Yes, just be honest. They, their questions are really seamless. They just want to know you. They just want to know what you're going for. Don't just, you'll be fine, honestly. She said you'll be fine. And if she says that, you're likely going to be fine. <laughs> 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 anyway, so that's it. Uh, yeah, that's it about you know, the documents you need for the time. From what she said, it can take between two and six weeks. When I applied for my work permit from Nigeria, it took over a month. They told us it was supposed to take two weeks, but then we had a delay and it took over a month. And I think the reason why it actually usually takes that long sometimes is because they have to take your, um, they have documents. to take our documents to Turkey. Turkey, yes, that's so why It's in Turkey that they give you the, um, that they issue the visa. So a lot can happen between Nigeria and Turkey. So basically like two to six weeks is a decent amount of time to mm -hmm. expect your visa response mm -hmm. to come out. 
so yeah i hope that this answers your questions if you have any more questions about you know what documents you need or how to go about the process or yeah whatever you need just ask feel free to ask in the comment section and we'll try to answer your questions if there are lots of questions we'll probably make another video to answer mm -hmm. it if not we'll just answer in the comment section so that's it for today thank you for watching till the end please like this video if you found it helpful if you know anybody who would also find it helpful please share this video with them and you could be helping somebody you don't True. know so like please share 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 like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed to my channel again my name is amarachi i currently live and work in kaunas lithuania and if you know that you you know you are applying or you got admission or you're getting into lithuania sometime you can always reach out to me on instagram and all i will do my best to help you um you know like have a soft landing when you come True, she will. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So yeah, thank you guys for thank you with me me. And thank you, Bimbo, for doing this Come with on. me. I'll do anything for you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, yeah. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs>